sleep is definitely important for learning and memory synaptic scaling those are very important functions of sleep i think it sounds pretty obvious to anyone that sleep is really important for the function of our brain most of the previous studies um, looking at sleep deprivation have focused on on the nervous system but when animals don't sleep when they're prevented from sleeping they actually die so it didn't really make sense that sleep would be all about the brain if an animal dies because of sleep deprivation, there has to be some kind of injury somewhere in the body, right, that, that we hoped we could find. So our basic question was, why is sleep essential for survival? Why is it essential for life? We really wanted to look at every tissue um, and uh, really understand uh, what was the cause of um, death in sleep deprived animals. So we found that actually the gut was the organ that was specifically vulnerable to sleep loss. And this was obviously very, really shocking to us. I remember Alex coming to me and telling me, look, I see the gut. Like it's the, you know, I see this thing repeatedly. And then, you know, we would sit down and talk about it. I think we argued a lot um, with my lab mates. I was frankly a bit skeptical about this. I was anticipating the main effects to be in the brain. I mean, yeah, I would say uh, it was definitely surprising. But it was really clear. That's the crazy thing. It wasn't something, you know, it was difficult to find. Once we started looking, we found it pretty quickly. What we see in the gut uh, and that we don't see in other tissues of sleep deprived animals is increased oxidative stress. There's accumulation of reactive oxygen species. And these are molecules that are extremely chemically reactive. Um, so they're very unstable and they um, essentially steal electrons from other from, from cellular macromolecules and destabilize, destroy them, destroy them. This is oxidative stress. Their gut, and only their gut, accumulates uh, uh, those molecules at very high levels. So we saw this in flies and in mice um, and in, with different methods of sleep deprivation. The second important finding uh, was that um, if we prevent ROS accumulation in the gut of sleep deprived flies, they can actually survive uh, without sleep. And I think I was finally completely convinced when we saw the rescue, when we were able to neutralize ROS specifically in the gut of sleep deprived animals, and we could show that these animals now live normally. That was when I, I became convinced. The questions now are, of course, why the gut? How does the gut know if the brain is sleeping? How does this actually kill the end, right? So these are all questions that we're working on now. But I think with this work, uh, we start to um, know uh, better where to look at and what to look at. And we hope that our findings may lead in the future for the, to a development of interventions that may mitigate some of the negative outcomes of insufficient sleep. To be honest with you, did I really think we would find this? No. Definitely not. And I was, this is something that I wanted to do for years and years and years. And I was just really reluctant to get into it because it's like, what are the chances we're going to figure it out? But then, but then, you know, with the people in my lab, they had the best attitude ever. And it just, you know, it was a, it was a really good situation.